fundamental analysis and the challenge is can I teach you fundamental analysis of a crypto asset in five minutes? It's the challenge is can we do it in five minutes? But the bigger challenge is is it possible at all to do fundamental analysis of something that has no earnings? Because as you know, in the stock, fundamental analysis of a stock means mainly looking at earnings and uh, earning reports. So if there are no earnings and earnings reports in a crypto, how you do fundamental analysis, Simon? This is, has been one of the main questions, especially from my friends from traditional finance. And so today, in the next five minutes, I'm going to share with you my nine points of a fundamental analysis. Point number 10 is then technical analysis. And I'll do an own video about that because you shouldn't invest in a, an asset, a crypto asset that doesn't pass your nine point of fundamental analysis, unless it's a trade, but I don't share trades here. I share only investments, meaning things that you want to hold long term and you want to buy at the low price. So let's go into the fundamental analysis. But uh, first, let's jump into uh, thanking our sponsors. Our sponsors are Strategy Sprints and they help you double revenue in 90 days. They have helped Anthony Yanorino improve his business and my, his team is now so much happier. His sales workflows got better. Then let's see what else these guys are up to. They have helped Marcello Demna improve his positioning and sales effectiveness in just 90 days. They have helped Chanel Greco uh, generate revenue while she is sleeping. Who doesn't want that, right? Uh, what happens while you sleep? Are you generating revenue? And then John Lee Dumas says that this is the blueprint that will ensure your company becomes on fire. So thank you to our sponsor, strategysprints.com. And if you need better revenues, you better call those guys. Now, the nine points. Point number one, does it really solve a problem? How do you research that? I think about the problems in this world right now in one area that I really understand. For example, I specialize only on the new finance and tech because these are the only two areas where I'm the first one to get information since I'm in the Silicon Valley Blockchain Society and in other um, and I'm coaching entrepreneurs in the tech space. So I will be soon informed. I will be immediately informed by stuff happening in the place. And I understand if it solves a problem or not. So the first thing, you pick an area where you understand what's going on. And then you see, does it really solve the problem there? If it does, the first one is check. I give it green yellow, red. I don't do numerical analysis because that's not precise anyways. And, and I don't want to spend more than two hours on one fundamental analysis piece. So green, if it really solves the problem. Then decentralization. Is it decentralized? Why is this important? Well, first, because it's the future. Uh, we're moving from centralization to decentralization. So if it's centralized, it will be obsolete soon. Second, it's de-risked. In investment, there are two things that you're thinking about. Risk, reward. So the first thing is to check the risks and manage the risks. And the second is how can you increase your upside potential. But the first one is how can we reduce the risk. In crypto, the main risks are Centralization, decentralization, lack of network effect, competition risk, regulation risk, inflation risk, team risk, community risk. Okay, these are the main risks. So the next thing, we check decentralization. Green, yellow, red. How do you know if a crypto asset is decentralized? Number of validators. If it has more than 2,000 validators, it's decentralized. If it's going towards there, it's not there yet, but it's going towards there, then you might bet on it. Network effects. Is it a one-sided marketplace? Is it just a single game? For example, X Infinity, I would never invest in it, even if it was pumping a lot. But it's, it's not a two-sided marketplace. It's just one game. 
So it's a one-sided marketplace. High risk, I don't touch it as a strategy investor. Fundamental analysis, bad score. Now, if it's a two-sided marketplace, like um, what's a good example of a two-sided marketplace? Let's say Engine, let's say Solana. Two-sided marketplaces where you have you have developers coming in, you have infrastructure pieces for other people to build their dApps on, you have exchanges using this to build decentralized exchanges, you have users, now you have multiple-sided marketplaces. These are the network effects that you want to have because the network effect calculated in Metcalf's law is what will de-risk and also what, what makes the thing valuable. Then you have competition risk. How easy is it to copy it? For example, when, whenever I hear, hey, this is, this is a fork of Ohm, I don't touch it. Because if it's so easy to duplicate by forking, then it's also easy to substitute. And in strategy analysis and fundamental analysis, you, you always want to think about how easy is it to disrupt them, to substitute them. Then the next thing is number of competitors, how they are doing, are they cheaper, faster, and um, UX, so how is it the user experience, and incentives. Are there incentives for people to keep the coin instead of to sell the coin? Then the inflation risk. Inflation risk is calculated by the, and this is, this is really important, that's why I wrote it down here. You want to pick assets that are deflationary, not inflationary. So how do you calculate deflation? It's the total annual issuance divided by the supply. Okay? And then you check the total value locked and you check the ratio of total value locked to market cap. You can do that, for example, on DeFi Lama. Then you check the regulatory risk. How, how's the probability that the SEC will see them as a security and punish them, for example, or that specific um, nations are going to ban them? So it's regulatory risk. In order to do that, you assess which asset class is it, and then you assess the risk of it being punished. And um, velocity. Are they moving in the right direction at the right pace? What's the adoption growth? What's the TVL growth? Then you go to the team. Has this team delivered something in the past? Are they able to execute? They don't need to have delivered exactly this, but they need to show me that they can deliver something somewhere. <laughs> Are they able to execute, to change direction, to stand up again, etc.? Then community. Uh, I go to GitHub and check number of contributors, number of pull requests open, number of commits, it's basically tasks that developers are taking, and the number of developers. Then I go to the other Discord group and see how the atmosphere is. Do they have 2,000 people in their Discord or 10,000 or 30,000? Their Telegram group, but that's usually very noisy. So I learn more from GitHub and Discord. That's it. These are the fundamental analysis points that you can do and if you put two hours into this you have now a fundamental analysis of your cryptos and then you go with the ones you feel uh, most comfortable with the next step is then you do your ta but that is for another video now technical analysis ta uh, this one was about um, fundamental analysis and now you are equipped with it hope it helps and uh, Keep rolling, everybody. Let me know what you need and um, enjoy your fundamental analysis.